Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies, and today we're going to look at and unbox the new Bear Divergent. And you're probably asking why I've got Marla here, because she's the closest thing I can find to a bear. We've got no bears in Australia, and she's the closest thing I've got um, to a bear, and I had no bear t-shirts. So let's just open this. Um, before I do that, let's just um, track through a little bit about bear archery. Um, now to me bear archery is kind of, I don't see much of bear in 2020 or 2019. Now 2020 is just thing, just turned up, but 2019 I haven't heard a lot about bear. Back in the, well back a few years ago, bear archery would claim it was um, a huge bow manufacturer or is a huge bow manufacturer and, it, and especially focuses on hunters, your bread and butter hunters, the people who want an affordable bow, which is a good quality bow for hunting. They don't really do the target line, they don't really do the 3D line bows. It's really the recreational hunter, which is where they've targeted their market. Now, Bear Archery back in the day, um, obviously owned by Fred Bear, um, was big in traditional recurves and they entered the compound market very early on in the piece um, with companies like Jennings, uh, Hoyt, uh, PSE and Dart and Archery. There was a couple of others at the start but Bear was definitely one of the first. Now Bear Archery was um, purchased by Jennings Archery um, back in the early days and that's back when I was sort of starting and I'm going to guess around 1980s um, to form a Bear Jennings brand. Now they thought by combining these two companies, which both had strength, that they would form an even bigger company. Um, now that I don't think really occurred because the Bear Bows and the Jennings Bows, which were both strong, Jennings was particularly strong in the target side and Bear particularly strong in the hunting side. When the companies merged, they kind of just blended into one. There was another, there was another company called Golden Eagle who was strong at that period of time who then purchased the Jennings, uh, Jennings Bear brand. Golden Eagle would then um, transform um, the Bear Jennings brand into Bear and then rename the Golden Eagle brand into um, Bear. So basically Jennings and Golden Eagle then disappeared leaving you the Bear brand. Now Bear Archery still make traditional, um, their traditional recurves very much unchanged from the, from the first early days when they used to make bows and they make the compound bows today with still a lot of the patents from the Jennings and Golden Eagle days. So let's have a look at this bow and let's see what's changed and let's see what's Jennings on this bow and what's Bear and see if there's any Golden Eagle in this in this lineup. So let's just put Marla down and let's unbox this bow. So to start off with, this is the box. Um, I have not shot this bow. I haven't opened this bow. Um, this is the first time I've seen it. So there's the name on the end. Um, so the Divergent um, itself comes in two models. The Divergent, this is the Divergent EKO bow. The Divergent is a 28 inch bow and I'm pretty sure this is a 31 inch bow or a 30 inch bow. So, okay, so it comes with a hat, not a bad looking hat. Um, this is the packaging inside, so these things stop the cardboard box from being squashed. These blocks, so yeah, like if you was, were to stand on the box, basically you don't squash it. Comes with um, an Allen key for adjusting bow poundage, that's a good idea. I'm not sure what the white thing is and the black thing inside there. I don't know, anyway, instructions are there. And that's pretty much it. So this is the bow. Now back in the early days, um, Bear made their own limbs and they were very unique I'm going to say Bear, I'm going to say Jennings as well. Um, and they had a very similar process in making them. They wrapped the fibres and they had a whole process. They then moulded them. And their limbs were pretty much indestructible. 
And then what happened was Gordon Glass started making limbs and all the companies started making Gordon Glass limbs or using Gordon Glass limbs in their bows. So I'm pretty sure most companies today are using Gordon Glass. And I thought Bear was using Gordon Glass and they definitely, I'm pretty sure they definitely were for a period. Now these limbs here, these are very much in the whole flavor of the old Jennings limbs. The Gordon Glass limb is a flat limb and, you know, like fiberglass and kind of shaped and they shape it. The bare limb, you can see, starts off thin and then flattens out. That's because when they mold it and they squash the fibers to get this shape. So to me, this is the traditional bare limb. So to, I don't know, but the, to, this to me looks like a bare limb. It does not look like a Gordon Glass limb. It doesn't exhibit any of the properties of the Gordon Glass limb. It looks like a traditional Jennings limb that, that they've been making for literally years and years and years and have had huge success with. Um, this looks like the limbs that have been around for ages. Um, right, so that's interesting to me because I, I would have assumed out of the box this was a Gordon Glass limb, but no, this looks like a, a traditional um, Bear Jennings limb, so which is different to the Golden Eagle limb, which is interesting because that was like a recurve limb. This is very much if you go and look at a Jennings from up from 20, 30 years ago, this limb looks pretty much the same. So what's good about Bear Jennings? Um, rotating modules, which means one bow fits anyone. You don't need a bow press to work on them. Um, this bow, I mean, they were using, Bear was using a hybrid cam system, but it looks like, and I'm looking here, it looks like they've gone to a twin cam system and whether you call it a binary cam or a twin cam, I don't really mind, but this definitely looks like a twin cam, binary cam system to me, where you've got the rotating modules here. Um, you don't need a bow press. You can see the scales on the back and you've got a draw stop there. Now the draw stops have got letters on the back here. Obviously I'm just doing this for the first time. So you've got the letters um, I to A and here on the module you see a plus and a minus. So moving the plus, basically making your module bigger um, makes the draw length bigger. So you can see it's currently set on number one there and it's on letter C which is kind of interesting you'd, you'd expect the module to have the same letter as I'd expect the module to have the same letter as the draw stop to keep it simple but it, it's obviously not the case that might be in the manual to tell you how that works but top and bottom will be identical now this is interesting here um, you can see on the outside here there's clearly a reason why they have this and it doesn't exist on the top it only exists on the bottom here now this to me looks like a limb stop um, it looks like this looks like something screws into here and you fit a limb stop to it so you get a cable stop and a limb stop so maybe if I read the instructions but like I said, this is an unboxing, so um, that would tell me. Now the strings um, that Bear use, they always used to make their own strings. Um, and I assume they're doing the same. They always made good quality strings. I never had an issue with a Bear string. So the bows have always been very dependable. The limbs have been very dependable. The strings have always been good. These strings look like really good quality. You can see the um, clear serpent they've used here. It's nice and clear and the um, twists on the string just follows straight through. It looks like a really good quality string um, Bear have used on this bow. Um, the cams are big, so I expect this bow to be smooth to draw back. But because of the shape, you can see it's flat here. I expect there to be some, or we'll have an interesting draw cycle. Um, I expect to get a little bit of speed out of this bow. Now the cable guard itself, this is a rot um, the cable guard moves down like this and it's held in place here. Now this is very much left over, this design is a very much left over from the Jennings days. They've been using this cable guard design for, I'm gonna guess 20 years. Um, the first Jennings that came out, I think it was the CK, something like that. 
and they've stuck to this cable guard design. Now the concept of this cable guard design is it pulls the arrows away here and as you draw it back, because it's at an angle, the cable guard will move in there. So reduce the torque on the limbs um, and on the cams so your cams stay aligned. Now the way Bear um, achieves their I'm just making sure I'm not talking garbage. So there's different ways in which people um, achieve cam alignment. One is through different poundage limbs and one is through placing these cams in a position so you don't get cam lean. So you can see here with the bear, they've shimmed this cam obviously to the place and this cam will be upright at full draw. Um, so to me that's interesting. You have a draw stop down the bottom this is very much like all the old draw stops on the bears. Um, now a lot of the bears used to have one at the top too. Now this is, one's only got the one. It's a machine riser, um, which is what you would expect for a bow at this price point. So this bow is priced in Australia at about $1,150. Uh, $1 um, I think in America it's around $700 US. Um, metal limb pockets. Uh, they don't look machine, they look like a cast metal. Um, and this, their limb pocket system on Bear is unique. So they kind of clip into these plastic washers here and it's kind of unique how it fits in. And down the back here, they fit into a, like a, this plastic pocket. So when you pull apart these bows, these limbs literally clip in to the plastic um, sockets to keep it all really tight. It's not a limb system that's used by other companies, but I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, and the way Bear have implemented it is unique and I'm surprised other companies haven't picked it up. There may be a patent on it. They've, um, they've got little dim limb dampness here on the limbs. Um, they look like they've stuck on with two-sided tape, I'm guessing. They look nice, they're clearly not gonna move out the way. Um, the grip is very um, up and right sort of up and down it's um now on the side here you can see it's smooth so when i hold the grip with lots of bows your thumb kind of hits on the edge here it's uncomfortable and depending on who you are you either like it or you don't like it but it's a great area of controversy on many bow designs where this kick, um, kicks, kicks out on the edge here with the bear it's completely smooth so it's completely comfortable in my hand um, so the grip to me feels nice the balance on the bow it's perfectly balanced in my hand it's not moving anywhere it feels like a nice it feels like a nice riser the weight of this bow i think i looked it up before i did this review is about 4.1 and it feels it it feels nice and light it feels a nice comfortable weight so how does this compare to other bows on the market 4.1 tends to be at the lighter end of the market um, so your latest PSE, um, NK, sorry, NXT bows are going to be like 4.5, I think. Um, this is kind of weighted around the weight of the Hoyt RX1, RX4s, their carbon bows. This is a good weight for a hunting bow, and this is where Bear really, this is where Bear targets their sales on the hunting market, on producing a bow design specifically for hunters. So they're looking for generally adjustability. Um, they're looking for a bow that's rugged, well priced, and nice and light. And to me, this looks like it's really hit that sort of mark. Um, the strings look good. I'm surprised they go orange. Um, they do. They do the orange blings, but I would, yeah, I'd be expecting more camo. They have two plunger button, two, pl two arrow rest holes there, which you know, obviously Hoyt like. Only one position there to bolt your sight onto. Um, the riser looks nice. I'm gonna say the edges here are like, with lots of machining, they round these edges off. They're not rounded off on this, so they're like a sharp edge here. So I would expect those edges to be rounded and they're like a distinctive line. They're sharp on the edge. Um, allows for a two-piece quiver, which is nice. Lots of companies have gone away for two-piece quivers. 
So overall, it's a nice looking bow. I'm really keen to give this bow a shot. Now it comes in two poundages. One is 70 and one is 60. Um, all my reviews are generally done on 60 pound bows. This is a 70, so I'm gonna wind it down to 60. Now, there's a sticker here, do not wind this bow back more than six turns, because if you wind it back over six turns, you're going to strip out the riser here. Now, a lot of bows have got a bushing in here to make winding out the bow easier. Um, I would have preferred that on the bear, like you'll see on most bow companies these days, a bushing in there. So if you do strip it out, you can just replace the bushing. You don't need to replace the whole riser. So that's going to be my first observation point. The camo, um, this is real tree edge. Um, the detail's not bad, but like here, it looks a little bit pixelated and maybe that's the way the camo looks. Um, the finish is not smooth, it's got a kind of a texture to it. Um, so I'm going to say it's not, when it comes to the finishes of some of the bows, there's the um, process used where they um, press the camo into the riser using some sort of heat process. This looks like a film process. Um, so I'm going to say the finish is not as fine as, you know, I'm going to pick some bows um, using the fusion process, the color fusion, which is what's used by Prime, Elite, PSE for the PSE top end bows. Um, so, but this is very much bare. Bare, this looks like a bare, I'm familiar, if you like bare bows, you're going to, this is just going to be like, this is the latest, I'm familiar with it, I know these limbs, I know this camo, I trust it, um, that's what I get from this bow, it reminds me of the bear that bear have produced for the last 20 years, it's been a dependable bow, that's what I get the feeling from this. Um, the cable guard is interesting, how it goes into the riser here, I can't see any screws holding this riser in place. Now I'm going to suggest how this holds in place. Where this bare logo is, if you peel that off, there's going to be two screws which go through the riser, through those two spots there which hold this cable guard in place. That's my gut feeling of how that would uses and that's why they have the sticker over the front. Um, but that's unique. So with that, I think we'll set up the um, Divergent EKO and see what it's like to shoot. Um, I'm pretty, pretty excited to have a shot actually. So I like Bear. Bear's always been a very dependable company. So let's um, give it a let's give it a shot. Oh, so they have a birth certificate. So back in the early days, lots of bows used to have birth certificates, and they used to do this for many reasons. One was to tell you who built the bow. Um, so if there was a defect on it, they could go back to the people who've, who've checked it off. Um, now the quality check on this says it was pre-built on the 26th of the 8th. Now this bow just came into my store, so it shows it was sitting on the shelf for a while at Bear. Um, limbs, cams and idler, it says number four, I don't know what that means. Strings, cables, timing and cam, lean 15, I don't know what that means. Labels and stickers 17, bow weight 71 pounds, install the accessory 16, ship loose items 18, package bow barcodes date stamp 18. So I'm going to guess those codes refer to stations so they can so if there's a problem with this bow they can say well this was ticked off by um, so if this bow did have Camlin they can say well number 15 checked it off um, on this date so they can go back to the person. Now the draw weight and string sizes are on the bottom sticker here this is very much what bears always done uh, it's got the serial number there. It's handwritten on, which is perfectly fine. So what I would, things I would like to see on bear, I would like to see, and it may be instruction manual, but I'd prefer to see it on the bow. I'd prefer to see a uh, um, specs chart saying what size draw length is what size module, um, what position module. Um, 
and I like that sort of stuck on a limb somewhere because when you're working in a shop like I've got six seven staff in my shop um, they're not going to know anything about this bow I don't know anything about this bow so when I go to sell this to someone it's like do I read the manual and when I've got six or seven staff in my shop do they all read the manual it's easy to make stuff simple keep life simple so I, I'd prefer the stuff on the limb here so when you sell it to a customer they can go well look this is simple I know what it is either that or they've got this little booklet here Okay, so there's a little booklet here. It says the axle to axle length is 30 inches. Uh, brace height is 6.5, comes in two poundages. The writing itself is a bit pixelated, so it looks like it's been done on, on a dot matrix printer. Speed's 338. Um, the draw length is 29. The date it was built was the 25th of the 9th, and it was checked off by C. Um, there's a thing here to say don't use this style of bow press um i'm going to say bow presses in my view break more bows than anything um and i'm always hesitant when uh, customers are having their bow worked on by another shop and it's nothing against the other shop but i know how many warranties i get in my shop very few and then another shop may get a whole heap and it's like well you, you're saying 100th of the bows I sell and you're getting a hundred times more warranty than I get so um, I suggest it's the way you're pressing your bow um, and then that leads to fights and arguments and stuff but basically the pressing thing is pretty simple you want to put as least pressure on the limbs as possible so wind out the bow before you work on it and only put on as much tension on the limbs that you need to work on the bow can't stress it enough I sold um, sold a bow three years ago to a guy and his limbs cracked um, and I said was has it been in a bow press and he said yes in a shop and I'm like oh great um, so I sent him up new limbs and I said look just be careful tell the shop to you know be careful when they work on it because I said otherwise they'll crack again literally a week later five days later the limbs cracked again and he rings me up abusing me um, and I'm like well it's a bow press you know and or it's the arrows you're shooting the arrows are too light which they were and then I basically hang up um, because I get abused um, so just be careful when you're pressing bows the least amount of pressure possible on the limbs to take the strings off and put the strings on if you pre if you crank them in too far you will break these limbs and any other limb as well and it's not that the limbs will break they don't they won't break they will develop little hairline little splinters and it might not be until you've shot the bow for a week till you see them until they come out because they're basically the fiberglass has been just damaged in the pressing of the bow very common um, and lucky I, don't, lucky I don't get a lot of it these days so anyway so that's the bare divergent EKO um, we'll set it up now and do a full test on this bow and see how it performs but I'm pretty excited by the new bear I think it looks good rollers in the cams which looks good I think this will be a good tuning bow thanks for watching bye